So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me well? Uh, well, today I want to speak uh, about the possible uh, implementation of uh, Skyway technology uh, for the uh, Thailand Eastern Economic Corridor. Uh, first of all, I want to speak about the technology itself, so that you would know what, uh, how, how it works, what, what that like. Uh, then I want uh, to speak about uh, three possible applications, which uh, three possible solutions which can be used here in Thailand. And uh, I want to finish with the uh, conclusions and the effect which ca it can bring to the economy of Thailand. Well, first of all, what Skyway? Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a transport system that, uh, which is situated at the second level, uh, which uh, has several advantages, which are, uh, it is fast, the speed is up to 500 kilometers per hour, it's safe, uh, it's uh, ecologically sustainable, it's easily accessible and it's comfortable. And now I want to show you a small video so you will see everything uh, by your own eyes. And uh, I want to uh, attract your attention to the fact that uh, everything which, is, uh, which, which will be shown is not a computer graphics, but it's a real video which is operated in Tower Abbott of Nabarak in Belarus. I want to speak uh, a bit more about uh, the advantages uh, of our transport system as it differs from the uh, conventional uh, transport. Uh, first of all, we have uh, quite low capex. You, you may see at this uh, uh, graph that uh, uh, we, uh, our, our capex is uh, at least twice less compared with most of conventional transport, and uh, if we compare with monorail, with like metro and mobile it uh, could be 10 times less. And uh, the main idea is that we use uh, very light but very uh, rigid a string rail, which is uh, based on the pre-stressed uh, rings, which are put into concrete. Uh, that's why we get a light but very solid structure. That's why it's less material, uh, it, it consumes less material, that's why it's cheaper. Further on, we uh, have minimal operating expenses. If we compare with the uh, conventional transport, we can see that uh, the main, uh, the most part of uh, the uh, cap of OPEX is uh, labor expenses and uh, cost of fuel. In our case, it's uh, the least part, and uh, and our transport is driverless, so we use automatic control system. I will speak about that a bit later. And uh, in general, we can. Uh, get the effect as the effect of uh, two, so our, our transport system is two to five times cheaper in terms of OPEX compared with conventional transport. Uh, the next point is uh, our transport system is uh, economically is uh, ecologically sustainable, so we use uh, minimal uh, land resources and we use electricity, so it minimizes the harmful emissions to the atmosphere and uh, uh, lots of people like that. And uh, the last point is safety. 
there might be issue here that uh, our transport system is situated at the, at the second level, so it doesn't cross with the existing transport at all. So the uh, traffic accidents are minimal. Uh, the second point is anti derailment system. You can see it in the picture. So it uh, also increases the safety of our transport system and, and it's uh, resistant to natural disasters. Uh, the previous speaker was saying about flus here. Uh, and actually, it's also uh, resistant towards earthquakes, tsunami, and other natural disasters. So uh, this transport system won't be ruined if any natural disasters happen. Well, and Actually, now we uh, are implementing that at our uh, test site in Belarus. We call it Ekaterina Park. It's uh, situated in the town of Marina Gorka. It's not far from the capital city of Minsk. And uh, here you can see all the main types of our uh, transport unibus, unibike, Inca. I'll uh, speak about them a bit later. And actually, you may also see that uh, we have good a date of uh, the previous year, of the year 2017. We have good uh, certificates uh, from the Russian Institute of uh, Urban Transport. That's why these, uh, uh, these uh, vehicles are not just operating, but they are certified. Well, and now let's think how, how, it, how, this project, uh, how our technology can help to the development of uh, Thailand and uh, in particular for the Eastern Economic Corridor. Uh, actually, uh, you can see this map and uh, actually the, my, the, the main point here to connect uh, the seaports and the airports into one integrated transport system. And what we can do here? Well, first of all, we can increase carpet in our we can reduce transportation costs, we can increase the convenience of the transport, we can minimize transportation time because uh, the speed of our transportation is up to 500 km per hour and we can promote tourism as well. Well, and now uh, let's speak about our main solutions which could be applied here. Uh, first of all, it's covered transportation. So, if speaking about Skyway transport system, it's, it has uh, several advantages. It's autonomous, it's point to point, it's high speed, it's ultra safe and energy efficient. Uh, we have also special solutions, not just for cargo transportation, but for the seaports as well. And many people uh, during, during, during this conference were asking exactly about these solutions. Uh, you can see at this picture how uh, container transportation would be arranged along the uh, along the water, for example, and it can combine uh, uh, container transportation at the upper level and uh, passenger transportation at the lower level. So it's universal transport system. And uh, also we can make uh, offshore ports so that we put it into the sea and put the uh, storage places. Uh, into the ground, so we leave uh, the shore of the of the sea uh, free of any infrastructure, so it can be used for recreation, for some for some other uh, economic activities. So, we, but uh, we don't need to put ports at the shore, and uh, these solutions could be applied not only for the big ports of world importance, but also for the small ports, as you can see in this slide. And here you can see how, how our uh, container transportation could work. So the speed is up to 500, uh, about, about 50 km per hour. It's automated loading and unloading. Its performance could be up to 30 million containers per year. Uh, and uh, we can use track as I said, as I told already for passenger transportation. And uh, we have uh, different solutions, not only for containers, but also for bulk, brake bulk and liquid cargo. Uh, this is uh, our cargo module, which is called Unit Truck. It's uh, arranged for a small amount of uh, cargo, it's for bulk cargo. Uh, actually for 1.8 uh, to metric tons. But if we put it, one, if we uh, place them one by one, 
uh, it can carry quite a great amount of cargo. Uh, we consider the performance of such system about uh, 100 million tons per year, even despite it looks so small. It's already op operating at our equity park, so you may see it in the video. And uh, we also have solutions for loaded and unloaded terminals. And I think that uh, these, uh, all these cargo systems could be integrated and it could integrate uh, the airports and seaports into uh, uni into unified transport system. Well, the next solution which I want to speak about is high-speed uh, high passenger transport. Uh, each can, it's, as, as I told already, it's, each is up to 500 km per hour. It's uh, bigger compared with conventional high-speed uh, trains. And uh, it can be used to uh, unite cities, regions, countries, and even continents. Uh, here I give uh, the map, I give for the possible example how it could be applied uh, for the case of Bangkok. Uh, for example, we can uh, connect Bangkok with Kuala Lumpur and Singapore. And yesterday we were uh, discussing the project Kuala Lumpur Singapore. Uh, I think this solution could be also applied for this project. If you compare uh, Skyway with other types of uh, high-speed transport systems, you can see that uh, almost all the parameters uh, that which are constructed for the OPEX accident rate and environmental impact, we are better. Uh, maybe the only point where we look a bit worse compared with aviation is speed, but we should take into account one point. If you go to the airport, you anyway need to wait for boarding, to stand in the queues, to pass control, and uh, actually you have to add 3-4 hours to the time of your, of your trip. Uh, in our case, we get from the city centre or city suburb, exactly to the city centre or city suburb, and actually you will get, for example, if you go for 500 kilometres or for 1,000 kilometres, you will get to the place of destination faster. And these are technical parameters for our high-speed universe. It's designed for uh, 10 people. Uh, actually, uh, it, uh, can, its design speed is 450 kilometers per hour, and uh, it can, uh, its performance is about 700 and uh, 720 hundred passengers per hour. And uh, the last point which I want to speak about as the last solution is urban passenger transport. First of all, I want to speak about Unibike, which is some kind of PRT designed by our company. It's designed uh, for two persons, but there could be solutions from one to five persons. And uh, it can be used as a sightseeing vehicle, for example, it could be a I think it would be really great to go by Unibike to Safari, for example, or to uh, see the, some natural places from the pet spy view. And also I can say that uh, it can be used also as a, as an urban, as a standard urban public transport. Uh, the idea here is that we just put it one by one and so they can carry uh, quite much passengers. I shall reflect on Well. These are main technical parameters of a unibike. Uh, it, its weight just about 80 uh, kilograms, 80, about 800 kilograms. It can carry two persons and uh, please pay attention to the energy consumption. Uh, actually, even at a speed of 150 kilometers per hour, it uh, consumes just uh, 1.7 liters of equivalent of fuel. It's electricity, but as a current of view, it's just 1.7 liters, much less compared to the standard automobile. And uh, this is carrying capacity. I want to show that it's not just recreational type of transport, but it's also could be a transportation system. So you can see that uh, this type of transport could carry about 150,000 uh, people per day. Uh, I also want, want to speak about uh, the other solution, which one is Unibus. 
which is uh, full-fledged uh, solution for open and intercity transportation. So this is uh, actual, repla actual possible replacement of metro, buses and any other types of transport. So if you look at the, at the graph, uh, you can see that the difference uh, of this, you can see that the uh, speed of our transport is much higher. It could uh, move at, the, at, at a speed of about 150 km per hour. And the, uh, the average speed is about 80 km. So you can, maybe you, you've already uh, tried how it is in Bangkok. Actually, there are lots of uh, congestions all over the roads, and it's quite difficult to get where you want in time. So, by using uh, Unibus, it won't be a problem. You will get whatever you need quite, quite quick. And uh, actually, as we see, it could be used here uh, for urban transport system in Bangkok and in the city of Pattaya, for transportation. Uh, system connecting Bangkok and Pattaya because now, as far as I as understood, it takes from two to three hours to get there. By using this transport, you can get there by one hour, it would be much more convenient. And it would, of course, boost the uh, tourism here. And uh, we can use it not only for these routes, but also for general intercity transport system connecting the entire region. So, if we do that, everything would be operating. It would be a general system which unites all the points. Uh, these are the main technical characteristics of Unibus. Uh, as I told already, it's designed for 14 persons. And uh, one more interesting fact. If, uh, uh, the, which is energy consumption. Actually, if uh, it will move, at, if you if go at the speed of 100 kilometers per hour and for example if it uses conditioner air conditioner then the energy consumption for 14 persons will be just equivalent of three liters of fuel so it's even for 14 persons it's much less compared with uh, traditional car and i forgot to say that uh, its performance would be up to uh, five uh, about 50,000 passengers per hour so it's compared with metro. One more solution, uh, which could be interesting uh, both inside the cities and outside the cities, is a second track structure. Actually, it's, uh, uh, it's a solution which replaces conventional bridge, but it's much lighter and much cheaper. So you need not to spend billions of dollars to, to build uh, some bridges but uh, it, uh, this solution could be used. And actually, it is all, it's already realized in our Ecotechno Park in Belarus, and uh, anybody can see how it works. This slide is devoted to carrying capacity. As I told already, it could carry about, uh, about 50,000 passengers per hour, and up to 1 million passengers per day. And uh, if speaking about the benefits for urban development, you can see that uh, universes can be integrated into any uh, city infrastructure, into any urban infrastructure. And uh, actually it can uh, have this, this, the following effects. Uh, first of all, improve living standards, reduce harmful emissions to the atmosphere, uh, practically no road accidents, uh, increasing of tourist potential, uh, Jobs, jobs creation and increased economic potential and investment attractiveness. Uh, this slide is devoted to our approach towards infrastructure and actually uh, some trade and service centers can be played inside the stations. And we also can use our track structure as a, uh, a place to, uh, to locate fiber optics and uh, cable power lines I'll show it in the next slide. So, for example, if we are speaking about some hard to reach areas, which I think uh, do exist here in Thailand, uh, you can use this uh, uh, transportation system not just as a, uh, as a transport, but also as a means to provide it with the internet and electricity. 
Uh, and uh, I was already told that our transport system is, uh, uh, is driverless. It's operated by automatic control, automated control system. The main features of which you can see at this slide. So it uses Wi-Fi and other points, and actually it's, uh, it uh, involves both the vehicles and the spots. Uh, one more solution, which could be applicable here in Thailand, uh, these are Skyway universities. Uh, you can see at this picture that uh, such uh, cities could be created along the seashore, maybe in some mountains, uh, at any place which is convenient for life. And actually you can live in the rural area, but you don't need any car to go to a place of work or place of study or to some recreation, because it is connected by horizontal lifts. And uh, you may use either, you, you may say in the picture, you may use either high-speed to, to planes, which can deliver you, for example, to Ho Chi Minh, to Hanoi, to, Bang uh, to Kuala Lumpur, to Singapore. And if you need to go to some short distances, you can use uh, the urban transport. And uh, actually, Everything is situated in walking distance, so you don't need to uh, you don't need to use car at all. And uh, I can surely say that this would uh, allow people to live in a healthy area and to enjoy life much more. Well, and uh, now I want to make a conclusion. Well, first of all, our uh, cargo solutions. Uh, can increase the capacity of ports and uh, freight terminals at least by 20 to uh, 30 percent, and the cost of such systems are three to four times less compared to conventional ones. Well, if speaking about high-speed transport, uh, we can connect uh, Thailand with Malaysia and Singapore, and other cities as well. And uh, the cost of uh, such track, uh, in my opinion, could be up to 10 to 15. Uh, billions of US dollars, which is cheaper than uh, other traditional solutions, especially the Japanese one, I think by five to ten times. And the last point, the urban BRT transport can solve uh, traffic problems in the cities, enhance tourism, and make transportation comfortable and well-priced. And uh, the construction of such uh, systems costs less than traditional one by five to seven, to seven times. Well, that's all. Thank you very much.